team effort. Sefner Christian Academy and Good Sam Mission. Who are they and what is it they do? And more importantly, what do they have to do with a bunch of teens from Church of the Resurrection? These are questions that we will try to explain this morning. The story for our mission trip began over 2,000 years ago. But in the interest of time, I'll pick that story up in November of 2009. It was then that I was newly on staff here at Church of the Resurrection, and Father Ron sent me to the National Youth Workers Convention in Atlanta, Georgia. It was a crazy long weekend with tons of great speakers, seminars, worship bands, and vendors. It was in the vendor area that I found and began a relationship with Team Effort. Team Effort is an interdenominational Christian mission organization that's been providing life-changing, faith-building mission experiences for over 20 years. This year, they ran camps in more than 20 cities, leading youth to put their faith into action through challenging and rewarding mission projects. The projects vary by location and have a very wide range of scope. From doing minor home repairs to disaster response, to supporting mission and ministry facilities, to working at homeless shelters and leading children's outreach programs. The camps are led primarily by college students and young adults with the support of local contractors, pastors, and other church staff and volunteers. They provide all the worship music, daily devotions, chapel teachings, and most of the meals. They also prearrange all the work locations, materials, and any tools that will be needed. Sefner Christian Academy is a Christian school attached to the Sefner, Florida Free Will Baptist Church. The school's been in operation for the past 30 years and currently has about 700 students enrolled. It's a small school, but has some great facilities and was our home for the week that we were in Florida. We slept on mattresses on floors of classrooms and used a bathroom that was halfway across campus. It was about four o'clock on Friday morning um, as I was walking back from the bathroom that I finally came to the realization of how blessed we were to have running water, even though it was very inconvenient at 4 a.m. There's so many that team effort may be helping this summer that don't have that luxury. The showers were equal distance away in another direction. Not the most convenient, but it worked. The cafeteria was another main area that we used and it was broken into an eating area and a place for our daily chapel time. Good Sam Mission is the mission that we serve at during our time in Florida. Good Sam was established in 1984 when about 10 and a half acres of land was donated from a local orange grower to the Presbyterian Church. There are multiple buildings that have no doubt undergone multiple uses over the years as this mission has evolved. At the center is a small chapel with several classrooms, offices, and a cafeteria. The mission started out as a way to provide free food and other items to those in need. Over time, it has developed into a much deeper program. Good Sam is no longer giving people fish, but teaching them to fish. They offer classes each week on things like prenatal education, sewing, health and safety, literacy, computer skills, cooking and nutrition, dental hygiene, emergency preparedness, marriage and family and parenting, English and Spanish. Upon completion of, of a class, participants are given tokens, um, tokens like this that can be used to purchase food and other items in their store that's on site. Throughout the year, there are other programs that they provide like back to school supplies, Thanksgiving and Christmas. They also run community nights for things like their um, family uh, salsa festival and movie nights. Um, all of this is accomplished with only three paid staff members and a large group of volunteers. Upon returning from our trip, we asked each of our students and leaders um, who attended the trip to write a short paragraph or two about their experience. And we've put that into one story of our week. So I'll step aside and allow a couple of our youth to share that story with you now. Good morning. On Sunday when we arrived, 
We unpacked our stuff and settled into our new home for a week at Stephanie Christian Academy. There were some expectations that this would be like our New Jersey trip from two years ago, but it didn't take long to realize that this experience was not going to be anything like New Jersey. There were two other churches with us, a Baptist church from Florida and a Methodist church from Mississippi. After unpacking, we headed out to dinner and then returned for our opening chapel service. It had been a long day of traveling and sleep came easily for most at lights out at 1030. Monday morning, after breakfast, we headed out to our work site for the week. All three churches were going to be working at the same location. Good Samaritan Missions, affectionately referred to as Good Sam, was our job for the week. Our group from Resurrection was broken into two main groups. One was going to be prepping two areas for painting and then painting, and the other was going to be tearing off an old roof and putting on a new one. The leadership at Good Sam, Bill and Teresa Cruz, welcomed us and prayed for us. We were then introduced to our contractor, Tim. Tim challenged all of us to not look forward to, the end, to Thursday as the end of our mission because we are all called to be missionaries at all times, at home and away. After work, we headed back to Stefner Academy, showered, and then had dinner. Chapel began at 8, and they broke from the traditional lessons and brought in a guest speaker, Tom Kuhn. Tom has been deaf since nine months old. He was abandoned by his parents in the hospital and taken in by a caregiver who was actually watching over him. Tom spoke, yes, spoke about his life, his childhood, and his misrepresentation of himself as deaf and dumb. He shared how he learned sign language, learned to read lips, and learned to speak. Could you imagine the difficulty one would have learning to speak when you can't even hear a sound? Tom has had a very successful career as a sports writer, and like he's met, for example, he's met Muhammad Ali, Roger Maris, Mickey Mantle, just an incredible amount of people. Um, he has also taught sign language to thousands of children, even leading some of those children to become interpreters for the deaf. Tom made a huge impact on our group. To be honest, he reminded me a lot of my grandfather, who passed away recently. I truly believe that God sent Tom there that weekend in order to show me that my grandfather was still here and is still with me always. And that's what meant the most to me about this mission trip. Equally as powerful was Tom's joy. He loves the Lord and his heart is full of joy for God's people, even as he was thrown away as a baby. God used Tom to show that the love of Jesus is the most powerful thing in this world. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous, do not be frightened, and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua 1.9 Tuesday morning, we headed back to Good Sam, and Tom joined us. It was great to have him around the work site. He took time to go up to every person. I seriously doubt there was one person left after the day who did not know how to sign their name. Also on Tuesday, Pops, or Ken, had the wonderful opportunity to meet with Teresa and learn more about how their mission started, and, how, and the changes that have occurred. One of the great things they talked about was how they have moved to a different level of helping. Instead of just giving away things, they asked their clients to earn their items. They attend classes, they can teach classes, volunteer at the mission, and all of these things earn them tokens, like Corey talked about, and which can be spent in the store to purchase food or clothes or gifts, anything. This brings on a level of responsibility and gives them a new sense of value and self-worth. There was so much information provided and a lot of ideas that could be explored here at Resurrection. As we wrapped up our day, people began to realize that working hard in what little you are given is as fulfilling as working hard in much. At the end of our workday, we returned to Sefner, had dinner, and then had our nightly chapel service. Our group jumped right in to participate in all of the games and activities. We all really enjoyed the time of worship and teaching. We, conclude our, we concluded our evening with a small group discussion and then lights out. Wednesday, we had another productive work day at Good Sam. It had been a great progression throughout the week, seeing the old torn away, washed away, and the new being created. Gradually, things were really starting to look new and fresh. After a long day of work, 
we headed to Fort DeSoto for a beach night, team effort style. After a dinner of burgers and hot dogs under the picnic shelter, we had worship and chapel together. Time was running out, so we opted to forego our small group until Thursday. Thursday is always a half day when you work with team effort. Our day was intense from beginning until the end. We were tired, we were hot, and it all eventually got to us. An argument broke out among our roofing team. Words were said that were taken the wrong way and feelings were hurt. Part of the team declared that they were done and would not go back onto the roof. After a break and some heartfelt conversation, our team went back up on the roof together and hammered in the final nail together as a family. After lunch, we had our closing time with Bill from Good Sam. He offered us great encouragement on how to move forward in our life of mission. We decided to have our small group from the previous night right there in the chapel at Good Sam. The conversations that happened were amazing. We saw lives change right before our eyes. Tears flowed from every eye as we realized that this was going to be the end of our SWAT family as we know it. Three members of our team are going to be going away to college. It was a time for our graduates to step up and raise up the new leadership. This experience showed me that no matter where the Lord takes me in the next few years, I will always have family to call on in times of struggle. Being one of the three graduates that were on this trip, it allowed me to take younger kids under my wings and teach them skills that will stay with them forever. I am very fortunate growing up in this church with the youth group. We have always been a very tight group. I hope that the younger kids will follow in our footsteps and become as close to one another as we are. My walk with Christ wouldn't be where it is without the friendships that I've made through the years. I am very thankful for the Lord allowing me to go on this trip. I have learned to be a little more patient, that it is indeed okay to cry, and that family is forever. On Thursday afternoon, our Thursday afternoon was spent playing a little mini golf and having dinner. We returned to Sefner for our closing chapel service. On Thursday night at chapel, a skit was put on by staff members of Team Effort. Depicted in this skit was a girl who was carrying around a bucket of items that kept her from the Lord and was holding her back. She admired all that was in her bucket, and when she was looking at them, she saw happiness. However, carrying the bucket around was a lot of work, and she was craved. She was craving the lighter burden that she, all, she saw others had. As written in Matthew chapter 11, verse 30, For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. As much as she tried to get rid of the things that she had in her bucket, she could not. The devil was holding her back and trying to keep her interested in the things that she had in her bucket. Finally, she was able to persevere and push past the devil and throw all of her nose at the foot of the cross. We all have items that are holding us back from experiencing true freedom that the Lord can so easily provide. For some of us, it is fear. For some, it's doubt. And for others, it's anger. We all have different things that we find hard to let go of, but that we need to give up in order to follow the Lord. We all look at those things and think that if they are nearly impossible to get rid of, but when we are finally able to overcome it, it will be like a huge weight lifted off of our shoulders, and we will have nothing blocking us from the way of the Lord. So, what is holding you back from saying yes to the Lord? We all need to take those things and throw them at the foot of the cross, and only then can we truly follow the Lord. Throughout our week in Tampa, Team Effort's theme was the demonstrated life. I struggled all week to find the theme in their presentation. I could count on one hand the times I heard the word demonstrate, and then finally it dawned on me. Demonstrating is not necessarily to be heard. It is to be seen and to be observed. Then looking closely, I saw all the demonstrated lives around me. Bill and Teresa of Good Sam and the love they have for their clients, but mostly the love that they have for the Lord. Tom and his life of hardship, being abandoned and left feeling that he was deaf 
and dumb for so many years. One minute is too long for anyone to feel that way. Yet he went for years until someone that he affectionately referred to as the tank showed him and demonstrated to him how he was indeed precious and wonderful, not only in her eyes, but also in God's. She showed him a new way to communicate and taught him to read lips, to sign, and to speak. And then we have Tim, our contractor, explaining to us that our mission did not end when we left Tampa. It is to continue until the day we meet Jesus face to face. We are to demonstrate Christ's love for all by serving everyone, both on mission trips and at home. My heart filled with joy as one of our students piped up and then their best father, Ron Greiser, voice said, even in the pickle aisle? And Tim, our contractor, looked a bit confused and said, yeah, even in the pickle aisle. Tim then asked us to leave our mark behind on our work. We were instructed to pick scripture and either paint it somewhere on surfaces we were painting or to nail it to the roof. Both teams chose the scripture from SWAT, 1 Timothy 4, 12. Do not let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in spirit, in love, and in purity. Once again, calling our kids out to demonstrate to everyone how our youth should represent themselves as Christians. At our small group on Thursday night, we shed tears over the teens that we have failed to reach, those who have wandered away and those who are really struggling right now. Our youth group realizes that the most important thing in life is relationships, first and foremost with God, and then family and friends. If your relationships are right in these areas, all else will fall into place. There really was not much fellowship between our youth group and the other two churches in Tampa. It was best described to me as they just don't want to play with us. And this is really unusual. In New Jersey, friendships were formed and some of these kids still keep in contact with each other to this day. Our kids tried and were shut down repeatedly. Our attempts were met with one word responses and the famous eye roll. We had our kids spread out among the tables for meals and still the other teams found another way to crowd around other tables and leave our kids alone. There were a couple here and there that would interact, but they were not the norm. And they would share with our kids that their groups even shut them out as well. And this broke our hearts and our kids were hurt and angry. And as leaders, we struggled with it. However, on Thursday, God in his most amazing love revealed why. You've heard about the little, well, big family argument that happened <clears throat> up on the roof on Thursday. It was hot, we were all tired, and Satan got all up in our weakness. One team came down off the roof and said they were not going back up and they were done. The other team went up and then God intervened. We ran out of shingles. This forced both groups off of the roof and into the chapel to seek some air conditioning and a little Holy Spirit that they did not ask for. Conversations started, apologies were offered and accepted. And when God was satisfied that all the relationships were as they were to be, the shingles arrived. The entire roofing group climbed the ladder together and each took a swing at that final nail, finishing strong and finishing as a family. This is a demonstrated life. People disagree, arguments happen all the time. The defining moment comes when we decide how are we going to handle it. After we finished our day, we decided to hold our small group from Wednesday night in the chapel at Good Sam. God showed up and showed off. There was not a dry eye in the room and hearts were shared and lives were changed. That night at our closing chapel was one of my favorite Jesus moments of the trip. Our team was all decked out in our yellow team effort shirts. And during worship, one by one, our kids wrapped their arms around the shoulders of one another. And all I could see was a big yellow group swaying to the music, praising Jesus and loving their family. I could not stand. I just sat down and cried at that point. And later that night, the youth were asked to pray together and then go up and throw their rocks to the foot of the cross. And as I looked around the room, the kids from the other group would go up one at a time and throw their rock down. Once again, the tears came as our group went up as a family 
and all at once let go of their issues that are holding them back from the full love of Christ. We left chapel and we headed to our final small group of the week. Our graduates stepped up. Gradually through the week, we leaders saw the metamorphosis begin. They were moving from students to leaders. They challenged the younger ones to step up and lead. One student spoke about some uncertainty they are having regarding something they really love doing. And the reply came from the group, have you prayed about it? This was from a graduate, not an adult leader. We all know that we are to look up to our elders for how to live this demonstrated life. We look to our parents and our grandparents and our priests and youth ministers, and these are wonderful and biblical choices. However, I am going to suggest that maybe sometime we should look to our youth. So many times I have watched these young men and women live a demonstrated life, and I am changed because of it. These kids are truly not just our future. They are our past, and they are here and now. You should be very proud of the way they represented our parish and themselves. These kids stood up at every meal and asked who will do the blessing or who will pray for us tonight. We had seven graduates from Resurrection this past June. One of those has already begun his life, his new life. This young man who has been a part of my family since he was five years old was drafted into the Major League Baseball League by the Seattle Mariners just five short days after graduation. He has the whole world within his grasp. He has more money than most of us could dream of. Yet do you know what he asked me for? He wants our prayers, the prayers of the church that he calls home, the prayers of the youth group that he calls family. He wants devotions, and he wants his life saturated in scripture. Imagine the demonstrated life he can lead with our prayers and guidance and the huge forum that God has now blessed him with. Soon, the remaining six of these kids will head off to college with aspirations of becoming doctors and teachers, pharmacists, possibly going into ministry, and who knows what all else. Statistics show that college years are the beginning of a step away from the church. We have a wonderful group of teenagers, and I ask that you keep them in your prayers, that college life will not change them but instead that the Lord, which is alive and well in them, will change the life of the colleges, the teachers, and the peers that they will come in contact with. You have the power to keep them on track and change the world because you have loved them as Christ called you to do. Jesus came into the world and gave us the perfect example of a demonstrated life. We are all called to that. Who are you looking for? Who are you looking to for advice on how to live your demonstrated life? Every person's life demonstrates something. What is it that yours demonstrates? Our kids have one final presentation from you, and this is um, a little nod to Tom. <laughs> 